Richmond, Virginia, a vibrant center for business and industry surrounded by more than a million people. However, in the spring of 1865, this city couldn't have looked more different. The Civil War was near an end, and 80 square blocks of the Confederate capital were in ashes. This open field is where a Confederate hospital stood in those closing days of the Civil War. It was overflowing with wounded and dying soldiers, and there weren't enough chaplains to minister to them. That's where a slave by the name of John Jasper stepped in. Sometimes Jasper came to Christ in the tobacco warehouse owned by his master and would become a well-known Richmond pastor. His sixth Mount Zion Baptist Church remains one of the city's most prominent churches. In those closing days of the Civil War, though, it was Jasper who volunteered to bring spiritual comfort to Confederate soldiers. Dr. A.G. Miller, a religion professor at Oberlin College, says Jasper saw it as his Christian duty. His desire to be free, yet his desire to do what he sees as God's call on his life, regardless of it, it caught in the circumstances that he's in, he is going to do as best as he can to serve God with whomever it may be. Those were desperate days here in Richmond. One Sunday in June of 1865, just after the war had ended, this church, St. Paul's Episcopal, was filled with folks leaning on each other and God for understanding about what their future would hold. They could never have imagined what would happen during the service. When the pastor began to serve communion, a well-dressed black man came forward first. To say that caused a few awkward moments among the white congregants would be an understatement. They remained seated, all except one man who went forward and knelt near him. That man was General Robert E. Lee. His actions come as no surprise to noted Civil War historian James Robertson, who says Lee was a man of duty and faith. His duty was to his native state, both in war and in peace. His faith was, uh, was very deep-seated, and I think Lee was simply exhibiting both. He knew that the South was crushed, defeated, humiliated. He knew that he himself had a duty to himself and to his God to help reconstruct his beloved Virginia as much as he could. The rest of the congregation followed Lee's example and took communion as well. But it's this stained glass window that represents one of the greatest ironies of the Civil War. It honors another prominent Confederate general, Stonewall Jackson. But the window is not in a museum. It's proudly displayed in the predominantly black Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church in Roanoke, Virginia. The church's founding pastor was Reverend Lilburn Downing. He designed the window in 1906 to honor Jackson for leading Downing's parents to faith in Christ when they were slave children. You see, prior to the Civil War, Jackson was a professor at the Virginia Military Institute and a deacon at the Lexington Presbyterian Church. In 1855, the man who would become one of the Civil War's most famous generals began a Sunday school class for black children, and Downing's father and mother were among his many students. As he saw it, slavery was something that God had ordained upon black people in America for God's own reasons and he had no right to challenge God's will. That was blasphemy. And so while he hated slavery, he was opposed to slavery, Jackson had to obey his Heavenly Father and accept the system. And he accepted it through doing the golden rule to do unto them as he would wish they would do unto him. Professor Miller believes Jackson's justification of slavery on biblical grounds was wrong. Yet in the midst of all of that, I think that people can do good stuff. <laughs> Uh, maybe for all the wrong reasons, but motivated by, uh, by sincere hearts. That sincerity was confirmed by the fact that Jackson was willing to break Virginia law by teaching the class. And even after the war began, Jackson sent money back to the church to keep the class going. Great, great. Richard Williams has documented Jackson's ministry in a book called Stonewall Jackson, The Black Man's Friend. He says the Sunday school class had a generational impact. A number of scholars, as Jackson referred to, to his students, uh, that went on to become ministers. Uh, there were th four churches established, three in Lexington, and then this one. Uh, two of those churches in Lexington are still vibrant ministries today. And when this statue at Jackson's gravesite in Lexington was erected in 1891, it was one of Jackson's scholars turned pastor who made the first contribution. 
How do the members of Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church feel about a stained glass window honoring a Confederate general? Freeland Pendleton, who's been a member of the church most of his life, says he has no problem with it. The reason I was okay with it because uh, he had the courage to teach us, teach blacks to read and write. Whether he was uh, fighting for slavery or whatever, he, he did do a good thing. What can we learn from stories like this today? I think we like to make uh, history simple. I think we like to say that they're just good guys and bad guys. And so we create uh, interpretations of history that simply have clear black and whites. But life is a lot of gray. It encourages me, uh, especially today when we see our country so divided over so many issues. Um, you know, it, 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 it continues to uh, reaffirm and confirm in my mind that Christ is the answer to our problems. Lee Webb, CBN News.